the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. The scripture reading for the second Sunday of Advent is from Isaiah chapter 11, verses 6 and 9. The wolf shall live with the lamb. The leopard shall lie down with the kid. The calf and the lion and the fatling together and a little child shall lead them. They will not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Here ends the reading. Peace and rest are often lacking during the Advent season. We find it hard to make space to prepare for the arrival of the Messiah. Charles Wesley wrote the Advent hymn, Come, Thou Expected Jesus in 1744. The hymn begins with the first verse referring to scriptural prophecies of Christ. It evokes the longing we feel to find freedom and the rest that is rare in modern life. But it moves on to personal application, stating Christ is the joy of every longing heart. Since Charles and his brother John were traveling evangelists, going from town to town on horseback, they understood stress, conflict, and hardship. They traveled in harsh conditions with little or no rest and faced mobs who disagreed with their movement, all for the mission of spreading the gospel. As we light the second candle of Advent, may we commit time each day to think on the Lord and find a fleeting moment of rest and peace. Let us pray. Lord of peace, we await your coming with great expectation. Our lives are marked by peace, even when our circumstance might prove to the contrary. May we bring reconciliation and Sabbath rest to others this Advent season. Amen. The first reading is Isaiah chapter 40, verses 1 through 11. Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that her warfare is ended and that her iniquity is pardoned, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries, in the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill shall be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry. And I said, what shall I cry? All flesh is grass, and all its beauty is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades when the breath of the Lord blows on it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Go on up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good news. Lift up your voice with strength. 
O Jerusalem, herald of good news, lift it up, fear not. Say to the cities of Judah, behold your God. Behold, the Lord God comes with might, and his arm rules for him. Behold, his reward is with him, and his recompense before him. He will tend his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms. He will carry them in his bosom and gently lead those that are with young. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join in unison as we intone Psalm 85. The second reading is 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 8 through 14. But do not overlook this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is as a thousand years and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slow to fulfill his promise, as some count slowness but is patient towards you, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should reach repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a roar, and the heavenly bodies will be burned up and dissolved, and the earth and the works that are done on it will be exposed. Since all these things are thus to be dissolved, what sort of people ought you to be in lives of holiness and godliness? Waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God because of which the heavens will be set on fire and dissolved and the heavenly bodies will melt as they burn. But according to his promise, we are waiting for new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Therefore, beloved, since you are waiting for these, be diligent to be found by him without spot or blemish and at peace. The word of the Lord. 
Thanks be to God. God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the first chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. The beginning of the Gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as it is written in Isaiah the prophet, Behold, I send my messenger before your face. Who will prepare your way? The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John appeared baptizing in the wilderness and proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And all the country of Judea and all Jerusalem were going out to him and were being baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair and he wore a leather belt around his waist and ate locusts and wild honey. And he preached, saying, After me comes he who is mightier than I the strap of whose sandal I'm not worthy to stoop down and untie. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. <laughs> Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Recently, I have been going through my closets. And I've been looking at some of my clothes. And I'm going, this shirt has faded a little bit. When did I buy it? When did I get it? And can I still wear it? See, I have a closet where I think the humidity's high because my clothes have a tendency to shrink. You know, the clothes that I bought 10, 15 years ago just don't seem to fit like they used to. I don't know if anybody has a closet like that. It must be the closet. <laughs> exactly, it's the closet. It's the closet. But these clothes have faded. Now, you could say maybe they're, they're still good clothes. They're not ripped and torn, but they just have faded over time. Because, actually, I did come out. To come, and anybody like this? I've had these clothes 20 years, 20, 25 years. And I'm like, I'm pulling this one shirt out, and I go, when did I ever wear this? And why? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing lasts in the color. And, and by the way, to finish the story, I made a big trip to Yoke Fellows this week to give those good clothes that just don't quite fit me the way they used to and, uh, and have faded. Of course, you all know that I've actually taken up golf in the last year and lived near golf courses. What's really interesting about a golf course is it is really important to them. How many of you go by a golf course and go, I wonder how they keep those greens green, right? Because what happens to grass in the fall? It dies. It fades away. You ever wondered how they keep the greens green? They paint them. <laughs> yeah, really, Rosemary. They, they fool everybody. They paint the greens green. And that gives you something to aim. You, gotta, you, you wouldn't ever be able to see. It would be difficult to see it and, and judge the distance if it wasn't painted, I believe. Uh, some people may have played golf. Larry, did you play in a day when they didn't paint the greens? Yeah. <laughs> So, so, but they do that. They started that in Pinehurst, I heard, reading yesterday. Because the grass withers and dies. Uh, we have a situation here, or one of the things we're doing, we're getting a refrigerator to put altar flowers in. Because if we don't, if we care for them, first of all, how many have bought altar flowers in the last year? Yeah. Altar flowers can be very expensive. 
But what will the flowers do if we don't take care of them? They wither and die away. So what Isaiah is talking about here in the first thing, but we can extend their life a little bit by putting them in a the refrigerator and make sure they're watered. We change a few out. And so I'm actually here in the middle of the sermon, I'm going to give a plug for altar flowers. We can make them last longer than, we're going to make them last longer than one week so that we can have a lot of altar flowers. But we do know what's going to happen to the altar flowers. They're going to die, and we're going to just throw them out. So Isaiah is talking about our faith today in his gospel. And he's talking about the children of Israel. See, what they have done, if you read the Old Testament, and you know, you really have to, if you want to appreciate the incarnation and what is going to happen on Christmas morning, you really have to read the Old Testament. I was looking at something this week. There's 363 prophecies pointing to Jesus in the Old Testament, in one scholar's opinion. 363. Luther believes that every psalm, which was written, his Old Testament was written thousands of years ago, every psalm points to Jesus. Every one of them. The children of Israel's faith. It would be good and solid, and they would believe in their God, and they would promote and call him out and tell everyone about him, and they would follow his ways. It's like us. It's, it's Christmas time. Carly, are you being good now? You confess. You, she, yeah, you know, right now, all our children, yeah, I'm being really good right now. Christmas is coming. We'll see how long that lasts until about noon on Christmas Day, right? After everybody gets tired from being up at 3 o'clock in the morning. So there, as we go through life, our faith is strong at points. We live in God's way. But something happens. The world gets involved. Uh, instead of uh, getting up and doing my devotion, uh, I said, man, I'm just going to sleep another half hour. Uh, instead of uh, going through your closet and giving your old, old clothes that have shrunk in that dehumidified closet that you have to yoke fellows so someone who else could use your clothes. Because what have they been doing? They've been hanging in the closet for 20 years. So our faith goes up and down. I'm, I think sometimes for me, depending on how, the, how my day is going, it can be like a minute-by-minute minute thing. <laughs> it's like that grass. It's going to fade, and it's going to get strong. But what, does, but what do we hear in today's first reading? The grass withers, the flower fades. It's pointing to our faith. But the word of God will stand forever. So when those times come, when we're fading a little bit, you have at your disposal. And I'm reading off a little sheet of papers, but I'll, so I'll get a big one for dramatic effect. You have the word of God. Just open it anywhere. It's amazing how sometimes if you just open it, it just tells you what you need to hear. And you don't have to go, well, I'm going to read a whole chapter, I'm going to read a whole book. No. Find a couple of verses. Actually, one of the things that they will teach in many discipling things, get you some go-to verses. Anita, I know Anita has a go-to verse. Uh, that verse when when, when your faith is fading just a little bit, that you can go read that. Oh, John 3.16 would be a good one. I like to add 17. 3.16 and 17, two verses that lifts you up and reminds you that Jesus 
God sent his only son into the world to die for you because your faith is going to fade. He knew it. In the gospel today, it begins the beginning. Other book in the Bible that starts the beginning is Genesis. From the very beginning, God knew your faith was going to fade. He worked with the children of Israel over and over again. He told them what to do, though. When you hear the good news, when you hear about your God in your life, that your city's going to be saved, go up onto the highest mountain. By the way, that's where you find God, on the highest mountain. And proclaim the good news to everyone. See, we're heading towards Christmas. We need, this is the good news. Lift up. Fear not. Behold your God. Behold the Lord God comes with might. Remember what I just said about the prophecies of Jesus coming into the world? This is, John prepared the way, but they already knew that he was coming. And his arms rules for him. Behold, his reward is him and his recompense before him. He will tend his flock like a shepherd. Our good shepherd, Jesus Christ, our Lord. He's going to take care of us when our faith is fading and coming back and forth. He's going to be with us. He not only was, he is. And in Advent, what we've been talking about is going to be. That is the good news. That See, this one is it. Reach out to his word because he is. Reach out to communion. When you're at that rail, you know you're within the body, and the, you're receiving the body and the blood, and you're remembering your baptism that you are one with him. He is with you. As you're going through this struggle every single day, minute by minute. Maybe another shameful plug, but this is one of the reasons I've offered, we're offering now, worship on Wednesday. It's a quiet worship. It gives you an opportunity to come and receive the sacrament and to be one with the Lord right in the middle of the week. And I promise you, because it happened this week, if there's just one of you here, we will do it. We will have our worship. And if no one's here, I'll stay in here and pray for you. Because that is where we are one. The Lamb is going to embrace us and he's going to put us in his arms. He will carry us in his bosom and gently lead us. Those that are with, he says, it says here, those that are with young. But that is those, think about when Jesus says, we are all to reach out to him. We are to be with him as a child that is pure of heart with no malice. And at the same time, he wants us to be like that. He is the one who's going to provide it for us that clean and peaceful heart, that heart that will go out into the world and proclaim his good news to all, to proclaim our baptisms, and that we are one with him. So when the chaos, how many think this is a chaotic time, just looking forward for it to be over? Or how many love this time at Christmas? It's kind of a, maybe it goes with the grass and the flowers. It's, it's each and both, right? There are moments when you wish it was just over and times which is just incredibly awesome. I'm, I'm thinking as uh, I talked to a friend of mine this morning. I said, you got all your stuff out for Christmas? She says, yes. I said, do you... Do you move it around year to year? She says, no way, I'm Lutheran. (laughs) 
So, so she has found a peace in that. But also, it, it, it's that stressful time. So reach out to the Word of God. When you're like the grass and the flower and you fade a little bit. Because you know what's coming. And ain't it wonderful that Easter's in the springtime? Do you think they planned it that way? Do you think God had anything to do with that? Because what happens in the spring? New life. Reach out to the Word. Proclaim the good news to all you see in this time of the year. And uh, remind them what it's really about. And that is the coming of our Savior as a child to give us new life each and every day. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. God has made us his people through baptism into Christ, living together in trust and hope. We confess our faith with the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, True God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again. In accordance with the scriptures, he has ascended into heaven and it is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. 
Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Almighty and eternal Lord, we gather this day as we prepare for the coming of the Lord as a child, as we give thanks for the blessing of his presence with us in our day-to-day -day walk and struggle. We call on him in our prayers as we pray for the leaders of our country, that in some way your wisdom and strength will come to them, that the barriers that they seem to place between each other could be knocked down for the good of all people, that the rhetoric change from personal attack to positive, uplifting visions. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Almighty and eternal Lord, your church is gathering, preparing, preparing in many ways to celebrate the birth of your son, preparing for that time that will come in our future. When the King of Kings comes and rules for all time, be with our leaders that they turn to your word for their guidance. They seek your wisdom and understanding for all that they do. We pray for our Bishop John, our Dean Nathan, all the pastors who have gathered. We pray for our church council and those who have agreed to, to take leadership roles in our midst. We pray for our national leadership. The executive council, the board of regents, all the different teams and committees that meet throughout May we all seek your patience, strength, and wisdom in all that we do. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Almighty and eternal Lord, there are so many that need your healing presence through the doctors and nurses that care for them. Those who need your loving compassion to be with them through those friends and family that visit. Their care may even come from a stranger that transforms them to know you. Lord, this day, we lift up Bill and Alan and Bill and Gail and Amber and Linda and Susan and B. Joe and Paulette and Lori. And those who are on our lips, in our hearts and on our minds at this time. Doug and Kim. Jay. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Almighty and eternal Lord, we pray this day for all who mourn. This is a time of year when it's very difficult for all those who have lost loved ones. Those who 
just miss their presence. It is a special time of family and friends. Lord, we call on you to, to be the strength and to hold in your loving arms all who mourn. May they know someone who will hold them up and give them a shoulder to lean on when needed at this time. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Almighty Lord, we call on you to be with those who cannot be with us, especially our homebound. May your loving presence come through those who care for them. May Buddy and Sarah and Janet and Francis and Barbara and Marilyn and Helen, Mary Beth, Billy Ray, Tommy and Bill and Jim all know your loving presence. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. To your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let us share that peace among one another. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty and ever-living God. You comforted your people with the promise of the Redeemer, through whom you will also make all things new, in the day when he comes again to judge the world in righteousness. And so with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Oh. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Almighty God, you provide the true bread from heaven, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. 
that we may have received the sacrament of his body and blood, may abide in him, and he in us, that he, we may be filled with his power of, of his endless life, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Just briefly, the church was put, we were supposed to do greening of the church yesterday. It was canceled. It's going to be next Saturday morning after the cookie walk. Speaking of the cookie walk, please look at your flyer in your bulletin. If you're making cookies, there's some instructions in there on, is it packaging, Daniel? Um, they're just please, just please uh, look at that. It will make it easier for the team that's putting it together. I know that they're still looking for bakers. So if you haven't signed up, please uh, let the team know that uh, you'd be glad to make something for the cookie walk. Jesus said to his disciples, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs>